Hey friends, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna show you how I painted my entryway tile, taking this 80s tile to something more current. But first we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna be using this Ryobi sander to sand the area, getting rid of a bunch of paint, dirt, and anything sticking to the tile, as well as smoothing the surface. I then go ahead and vacuum the area, just getting rid of any loose dirt from the sander. I then go in with my crud cutter, just getting any stains or grease in between the tile, right in the grout area. I then go in with my Rust-Oleum white chalk paint. You can use whatever chalk paint that you prefer. I happen to choose Rust-Oleum's um, because I heard really, really great things about it. So I go in and I just get my hands dirty. I just pour it right out from the bucket, you guys, onto the floor instead of loading my brush first, but you can do it any way you'd like. using this really wide roller brush just to cover the area really, really well with my first layer. I do end up doing two coats of this. I let the first coat dry, um, but really I'm just trying to get a really good base coat on the entire tile area in white. Look, we have an imposter. Keep your pets away from wet paint. Yes, that's right guys, make sure your pets are not around the wet paint when you're starting a new project. Anyway, let's get back to the tutorial. Next, I begin going in with this edging brush just to kind of get the corners really, really good. I would suggest using some tape along the edges so that you're not getting any paint on your floor. Um, I just happened to have a really good brush and I felt confident painting it without um, any tape. Um, but if you're not confident in doing that, I would definitely suggest getting some painter's tape and taping around your floor where you do not want the chalk paint. So then I go in and do a second layer after two hours. You'll notice I didn't paint underneath our mud bench because we have some plans for that, so stay tuned. Now we're ready for the print, you guys. I'm using Rust-Oleum's chalk paint in age gray and a matte finish for the print. I use a container to pour the paint into so that I have a good area to roll my brush through the paint. So I ended up using a microfiber roller brush to do the print on the tile, but I suggest you guys use a foam roller brush. I wish I had looked into what specific brush I should have used for the tile print, uh, but I didn't, and so I just grabbed this, and it worked fine, but I think you'll have even more success if you use a foam roller. I'll have one linked below. All right, guys, now we're ready to start the print. As you can see, I did one up in the top corner. I believe this was my second time doing it. So I loaded my brush a little bit easier this time because I noticed that the paint was leaking through a little bit. So go easy on the paint. And I started in the corner and just really made sure to get in every single edge. Once that's done, I gently peel away the tape and gently take away the stencil before it's dry so I can move on to the next tile. So 
this was the first one that I did and you can tell like especially up in here how much extra paint I used and it just bled through. Here looks decent but this is you can definitely tell this is like my first try at this. I mean it's smudged, it's just blurry. I used a lot less paint on this one and you can tell how much more clear it is, although I, you can tell like I started here with more paint and then the less paint I used, it's so much more crisp. So uh, that's a little tip to know is to use very, very little paint and to work in layers as opposed to trying to just get it all done in one section. Okay, so my strategy moving forward was to dip my brush into the paint and actually roll off the excess onto a paper towel and be working in smaller sections. I also want to say as I'm doing a very light layer I actually really like the way that it looks and I think that if you're really afraid that you're gonna mess up the print um, and that it's just not gonna come out like you're gonna just bleed like this is just not like typically your thing if you want to do more like an airbrushed kind of antique tile look you could just do a very imperfect um, pattern um, with really light paint and so you don't really have to worry about like the mess ups or it being perfect like a perfect stamp essentially I'll try to insert a picture somewhere on the screen because I've seen printed tile that looks kind of um, aged and worn and I love that look and it's kind of my style so I'm kind of bummed that I didn't um, go lighter um, for the first few tiles that I did because I think that would look so awesome. So that might be a, a technique to explore if you're going to try to do this project and you like that look. Definitely um, do a lighter layer and see if you like that um, because I think that there's um, beauty in the imperfection of um, tile work or really anything that you're designing. It doesn't always have to be perfect. That kind of weathered worn in look is really cool. So. I wanted to show you the like it's kind of blown out here I don't know if you just see it see how it's just very like spotty so this is like my first layer that I'm doing but if I were to pull this off and it just kind of looks airbrushed I'd probably go in and like do some solid areas like this is more solid than this area but I kind of like that unevenness and it would be so easy to do something like this if you're worried that you just can't get the perfect print, which I definitely have not gotten a perfect print. I just don't think that it's possible. Um, so this might be a technique you try. So this is what the floor looked after I did every single tile mark. And I'm going to zoom you in here so you can kind of see where it bled a little bit in many different places. And from far away it looked fine, but I decided I wanted to go with that weathered look. So. Right in this area, I have this textured brush and I'm just dipping it in the white chalk paint and I'm getting really abstract, you guys. I am scratching in different places, putting more paint where the imperfections really stood out to me. And then I'm just kind of rubbing it and um, circular motion, sometimes straight motions to kind of get that scratched, weathered look.
after doing this technique on a few tiles, I just went for it on the other tiles. I was being really messy and very imperfect and I really ended up liking the way that it looks. It definitely takes some confidence to decide that you aren't going to stick with the perfect print and you're not sure exactly how it was going to turn out. But I knew that if it turned out horribly wrong, I could just actually go back over all of the tiles with white paint. So it's really about trial and error. And if you have the guts to kind of make it worn and a little imperfect, I say go for it. I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out, but I ended up loving it. All right guys, now it's time for the protective finish. I'm using the polycrylic top coat in a satin finish. So I took this top coat and poured it directly from the bucket onto the floor and spread it with the foam roller. This took overnight to dry and I felt like in two days it wasn't very sticky so we limited our traffic on this floor. And there you have it guys. This is the completed tile. I'm so happy with it. We still have a lot of work to do as far as the trim and the mud bench area but as far as the tile goes we couldn't be happier. If you enjoyed this video or learned something beneficial to you I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you guys in the next video.